Okay, so again, um, our world is that you do need to know that rule. Your world is that you're not going to be asked to prove it on your exams, but our world is you do have to know it. So uh, it's another important one you'll use quite a bit. Um, so let's take a look at uh, using this a little bit. So here's the easy way to think of natural logs derivative. The natural logs derivative is the reciprocal. That's what we just did in that little proof. So what's the reciprocal going to be here? <coughs> what is a reciprocal? Like if I said I had um, 3 fifths, what would its reciprocal be? 5 thirds. thirds. How would you do that? Flip it. You just kind of flipped your fraction. So what's the reciprocal of 2x going to be? 1 over 2x. 1 over 2x. Okay, we're not done though because there's a outside function and an inside function. Okay. So it's the derivative of the outside, which is 1 over 2x, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. That means those would cancel, and uh, whoops. we still end up with 1 over x. Okay. So let's do one more together. We'll see if we can chain rule this thing up. So what's the derivative of the outside going to be for this next example? Okay, what's the derivative of the natural log? The reciprocal? 1 over x squared plus 1. 1 over x squared plus 1 will be the derivative of the outside. What's the derivative of the inside? 2x. 2x. So you could write it most likely as one fraction, like that. So I'm going to let you tackle the next two, and then we'll come back together and review them. Okay, so the first thing we have to do here is which rule are we looking at for this next one? Product rule, yeah. So the derivative of the first piece is 1 plus x times the derivative of the second piece, which is 1 over x. So this would just be the natural log x plus 1. All right, for the next one, what rule are we dealing with now? Chain rule. So the derivative of the outside will be 3 natural log x, all squared. And the derivative of the inside is 1 over x. Okay. Pardon me? No? Okay. All right. So one... Um, one thing that we're going to see that logs come in handy with, um, they can make things that look horrendous a lot easier to deal with because of the log laws. So for example, if you were to look, like, look at something like this, and you were to just say, OK, here we go. It's going to take me an hour, and I'm just going to go for it. Uh, you probably want to think a minute about what you're doing and see how you could simplify this. So here's my advice. I'm going to do the first one for you. In this first one, I can use the log laws. I could rewrite this as the natural log of x plus 1 to the 1 half. I could then say, well, why would I want to deal with an exponent when I can move it in this log and make it 1 half the natural log of x plus 1? Now I can take its derivative, and I don't need the chain rule or any of that other stuff. It's just going to be the reciprocal. So it'll be 1 half times 1 over x plus 1. And the derivative of the inside is 1, so I don't need to deal with that anymore. OK, so for this next mother of all log differentiation questions, uh, there's a lot of log laws in here. For example, there's a product rule, there's a chain rule, there's a quotient rule, there's a product log. rule, or sorry, a chain rule. Separate them all out using logs. You can get rid of all of those by pulling apart this into pieces that add and subtract using logs. OK? So I'll give you a couple of minutes to try pulling it apart before you take the derivative. <clears throat> OK, so I'm going to pull apart the logs here. So um, for example, first of all, I could call this the natural log of x times x plus 1 squared. Take away the natural log um, of 2x cubed minus 1 to the 1 half. Sorry, I'm running out of space there. but. Um, then I can keep using log laws to say that's natural <coughs> log x plus um, natural log 
x plus 1 squared. Take away 1 half the natural log of 2x cubed minus 1. And then the last one I'll probably want to do to rewrite this is uh, I'll move this exponent to the front. So natural log x plus 2 natural log x plus 1. Take away 1 half natural log 2x cubed minus 1. So now I've basically ripped apart everything I can, but I've removed a lot of product and chain rules and quotient rules and things like that from my uh, problem. So if I take these derivatives one piece at a time, the first piece has a derivative of 1 over x. The second piece will be 2, plus, 2 over x plus 1. Then 1 half times 1 over 2x cubed minus 1 times 6x squared, which is the derivative of the inside. Okay. So in black, that would be the, the uh, derivative for that piece, which is way easier than trying to do all those product quotients and chain rules. Yeah? Why is it 2 over x plus 1? Um, there's a 2 in front right here. Don't you times it in? Today? Yep, which is the same as timesing it in, right? Putting it on the top of the fraction is the same as multiplying it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, the only thing we haven't talked about is what if we don't have base e, right? So far it's been pretty convenient to work with e to the x and natural log x, but what if we don't have it? So here are the rules for bases other than e. It's almost identical. There's one subtle difference. The subtle difference is that there's this uh, adjustment. I call it an adjustment. I'll show you, uh, I'll give you an idea where it comes from. But, for example, this here is the adjustment I'm talking about. It's almost identical to my favorite uh, uh, derivative. If I was to blank all this out, it would be my favorite one. But, it's got to have that adjustment by natural log A. Okay, for the, I don't want to spend a lot of class time here today. But for those of you that uh, that want to see why, if you take the derivative of this piece here, which we already know how to do exponential derivatives, these two are equivalent. Take the derivative of the right side, you'll get the same as the derivative for the left side. So uh, anyway, if you want to know why it is that there is that adjustment, then take the derivative of this piece here. And I apologize that we don't have time today to, to show you why that is. But um, it's, it's a little easier even to explain with the logs. Um, again, there's this adjustment. Instead of 1 over x, it's got to have this adjustment by natural log of a. So the natural log for the base. Okay, so why don't I show you with an actual uh, value. Okay, here's, here's how it could work. What if I wanted to find the log base 5 of x? But I've only given you the tools to work with log and base e. What on earth could we do to fix this problem? I didn't give you base 5. I've given you base E. Has it been that long since we did math 12? Change, change of base rule. Yeah, that's right. So if you remember your change of base rule, I could call this the natural log of x over the natural log of 5. And the natural log of 5 is just the constant that my calculator would give me. So really, I could think of this as some constant times the natural log of x. So if I want to take its derivative, that would be constant is unaffected. And the derivative for this piece here is 1 over x. So that's where the adjustment comes from when we do the, the logs. It's change of base rule. But again, for some of you, you'll just be content to say, no, no, I'd rather just know the rule. I don't really care. But uh, those of you who do want to know why, again, that's as quick as I can, much time as I can spend today, unfortunately. So let's try it then. Um, derivative for 2 to the sine of x. Okay. See if we can, um, well, why don't we work out this first one together. 2 to the sine x. This is almost my favorite derivative. What's the difference between this and my favorite derivative? Sine. Okay, let's ignore the sine for now. Because even this would be part of my favorite derivative. It just has chain rule in it, right? So 
It's a 2, but how do I adjust it when I take the derivative? Pardon me? Yeah, so it's going to be times the natural log of 2, and then my favorite derivative, the derivative that didn't change. Okay. So that's the derivative for the outside piece. And the derivative of the inside piece would be cosine. Okay, so I'm going to let you try and do log in base 5. Remember, it's almost like the logarithm. There's just a slight adjustment to make. Okay, so again, it's almost like the natural log. So let's pretend it was natural log, and then we can make the adjustment afterwards. If this were back to natural log, What's the derivative for the natural log? The reciprocal. So that would be derivative of the outside. What's the derivative of the inside? We can handle this. I realize it's 930, but we can handle this. What's the derivative of the inside function? I swear, minus, one, of these minus minus. one of these days I'm going to get the Jeopardy music to play uh, on my computer while we're waiting. Um, right, so that's the derivative of the inside. Now this would be if we had natural log, which we don't. So how do we make the adjustment so that this is actually the, the derivative for log base 5? What's missing here that should be in the log base 5? One piece, one piece, what is it? The natural log? Yeah. So that's the piece that's missing. Natural log of 5 would have to be multiplied onto that whole thing. So that's change of base, right? Yeah, essentially it's the change of base rule, but uh, that's where it comes from. So um, again, I know we're going to need to practice this a bit, so uh, we're going to wrap our lesson here. I'll give you the rest of the block to do some practice.